Hey everyone, welcome back. Do genetics actually matter? Well, yes and no. Let me explain. Genetics do play a significant role in determining what an individual can do in the realm of fitness. The genetic makeup of an individual can influence various aspects of their fitness journey. In social media, good genetics are shown in many factors such as muscle building potential or strength output. People who excel in genetic adaptations are usually the most popular in the social media industry. Here's why genetics matter in fitness. Muscle fiber type. Genetics can influence the portion of muscles that you have that whether it be slow or fast twitch muscle fibers. Slow is categorized as type one muscle fibers. Fast twitch are categorized as type two muscle fibers. Slow twitch muscle fibers are associated with long endurance activities such as marathon runners. Stay hard. Fast twitch muscle fibers are more associated with strength training or power output, such as Olympic lifting. Yes, the distribution of these fiber tights can affect an individual's natural potential for different types of physical activity. Problem number one, it is insanely difficult to figure out what fraction of faster and slower fiber types any one specific muscle is in your body. Metabolic rate. Metabolism is still a very tricky question that many in the fitness industry are still trying to figure out. Jeff Nippard recently did a video on this and I definitely recommend you check it out to see how it can vary. You can see that the person with the so-called slowest metabolism only burned about 1,400 calories per day, while the person with the fastest metabolism burned a whopping 5,700 calories per day at the exact same body weight. Genetics can influence how the metabolism utilizes energy effectively. A high metabolism means that you are inefficient at using calories, meaning you're going to burn them off for no reason. People with a naturally high metabolism tend to burn more calories even at rest, making it easier for them to maintain a healthy body composition or make it harder for them to gain weight. It is usually associated with ectomorphs or the skinny teenagers who can eat 4,000 calories and still not gain weight. That's BS, but still. If Joe Fazer, probably one of the most famous skinny to muscular YouTubers out there, can gain weight on 4,000 calories, so can you. Pesto pasta. Neat is probably the most deciding factor when it comes to your metabolism, but that's for another video. Genetics can factor into your body composition. This includes bone density, your skeletal frame. Some individuals may have a genetic predisposition to carry more muscle or less fat. Men actually have a higher, generally have a higher concentration of alpha-2 receptors in their stomach, you know, abdominal region. On the other hand, for women, it's actually a little bit different. They actually have higher concentrations of these alpha-2 receptors in their lower body, which is why a lot more women tend to store body fat in their thighs and in their butt and just their lower body in general. Affecting their overall physical appearance. Me, for example, I have a naturally broader frame. I have a wider clavicle, and that means that I can store more muscle on my frame. My ribs are big, my knees are big, everything's big. Well, not really. Having a bigger frame means you can add more muscle to that said frame. Scapula, so how long your clavicles are and how far out your shoulders go, that, you can't really train that to happen. You can get bigger muscles, we can't get bigger bones. But that means that you need to add more mass to look muscular compared to one of those stereotypical manlets who can add a small amount of muscle but look jacked. Talking to you, Greg Doucette. Muscle insertions and muscle bellies also contribute. Certain muscle insertions can make it look like the muscle is bigger, even though it's not. I'm 180 sexy pounds. So when it concerns a small bicep insertion, the peak may be better. But if you have a long bicep insertion, the muscle will look fuller, but you'll need to fill out that bicep more to make it just as big as the small bicep insertion. An odd genetic factor is oxygen utilization. The cardiac system is very important. It is the body's ability to efficiently use oxygen during exercise. Lung capacity, cardiac output, and production of red blood cells can impact an individual's aerobic fitness and endurance capacity. Oxygen utilization is very beneficial for marathon runners or cross country athletes, but it is also important for strongmen because they're gonna need the endurance to let's say do an axle press multiple times in a row or carry a car for as long as they can. And there it is. Another world record for Eddie the He's Beast. Done it. Again, it is not just for the athletes who run. Injury risk is something many forget about. A person's susceptibility to injury is really dependent on the genetics. 
For example, some people may have genetic variations that make them more prone to tendon tears or ligament strains. And some may have the opposite, being very strong and allowing them to have a longer gym career and allow them to be safer during a lift. This can showcase itself in many ways, such as flexibility, having the ability to, to stretch one muscle as far as it can. Like me, I have quite flexible hamstrings, meaning that RDLs are quite hard for me unless I do it on a elevated position. Besides natural genetic baselines, I want to talk about your hormonal response to PEDs, which is also dependent on your genetics. The hormonal response to PEDs can impact an individual's fitness potential. This includes a production and regulation of hormones, such as testosterone or growth hormone. These PEDs often aim to manipulate how these hormones are used for athletic output, such as muscle growth or recovery. Genetic variations can influence how an individual's body responds to these PEDs. For example, Nick Walker. Nick Walker is probably one of the most well-known open bodybuilders in this current time. If you check back early in his career, he wasn't that big compared to natural bodybuilders. But when Nick Walker took PEDs, he blew up. He added over 50 pounds of muscle and looks unrecognizable to his first days of lifting. Like, this is insane. Like This is hyper responder. If you didn't know what it was, so it also says that you have your natural genetics, but also PED genetics. Now, I'm not saying that every one of you can take PEDs and look like your favorite bodybuilder. because That's not the case. You need to have the genetics to be good with PEDs. If your genetics already are shit, then most likely your PEDs genetics are also going to be shit. It's just a blank screen. So normal and he obviously, yeah, might it have taken you another six 12 months or so yeah but it's like you're fucking ruining your body right now for absolutely no reason dude with all these factors in mind genetics aren't everything some of you out there will look at the genetic elite on social media and aspire to be like them or still feel like you don't have the genetics either being average or below average however genetics concern more than big muscles or a 405 bench press <laughs> It covers a spectrum that involves muscle adaptation, speed, strength, endurance, speed, flexibility, and overall athletic performance. For example, person A could have a tremendous amount of neuromuscular recruitment, equaling a greater strength output, but has below average recovery. Person B can have average strength, but has a higher recovery response. Person A may be able to lift some heavy ass weight, but they will need to take multiple rest days to get back to their normal levels. Person B could train hard too, and only need two rest days to get back to their final levels of recovery. So if you compare the two, which one is better? Strength or longevity? Which would you choose? While genetics provide a foundation, it's still important to note that the fitness outcomes are also influenced by other factors such as nutrition, training, lifestyle choices, and environmental factors. Although individuals may have genetic predispositions, the right nutrition plan and training program and consistent effort can still provide I mean, uh, significant basic. results. My muscles are getting bigger. Showing that fitness levels aren't just based on genetics, but also environmental factors also. If you never train, then you'll never know what genetics you have. Have. That's why I recommend everyone to be the best you you can be. Build up on your own genetics, build on your foundations, don't strive to be like all these elites out there. Aspire to be like them, take motivation from them, but don't try to get there because then you're going to go into a very long spiral of PDs and body dysmorphia. That is also what I talked about in my last video. With that information, I bid you to make your own decisions. Train hard, eat clean, and never give up. Rent to repeat, that's how you're gonna get big, jacked, and happy. And to that, I bid you farewell. Stay safe, love you lads, ladies, and lifting lovers. Okay, time to take trend. You have heavy weight!